Good evening and welcome back to our next installation of our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. Tonight, a smooth evening of jazz and funk featuring Fabian Lance Band. Gentlemen, I'm looking forward to it.
All right. Hope everybody is doing great out there. This is uh, the VMFA virtual concert series. Today you're listening to Fabian Lance, the Fabian Lance Band. And uh, we're here to have just a little fun. We decided to open up with a, a song called uh, Heartbreak Hotel, kind of liven things up a little bit. Um, we're going to continue uh, with a song called Sunset in Venice. It's a song that I wrote, uh, I don't know, maybe about 25 years ago yeah, yeah. or more. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we're going to do this tune. This is it's a song on my album uh, called Reminisce. So it's one of my one of my favorites, Sunset in Venice.
hear the applause. I, I really can. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, we're here. Um, I'm going to do a few other songs off the album. Uh, this next song is a song called Once More. Uh, I know you expect to hear a great story behind this, but there's no great story behind this song. We just thought it was a, a, a song that felt good, had a nice little groove behind it, and we decided to turn it into a song. That's, that's the story behind it. So once more. Just a second. Just a second. All right, here we go.
All right. That was once more featuring my good brother Carl Lester Eel on bass and myself, Fabian Lance. Oh, guitar, I'm sorry. You know, the, these guys, they play so many instru different instruments, I cannot keep up with them. And I, I've known them for years, and I always get it straight. That I, hey, I'm in Title One. I'm in Title One. Um, the next, next song we're going to do is a song um, by Herbie Hancock called Maiden Voyage. And um, I understand in an interview that he had done, uh, he was talking about how this song came about. And he was asked to write a commercial for a, a perfume, some, some perfume company. And um, this was a song that was uh, part of that commercial. So um, this is how that particular tune came about. Again, the title of the song called Maiden Voyage.
Fabian Lance Band, thank you gentlemen for helping us round out the end of another week with so much fire and then so much smoothness. And then a touch of grace at the end. I'm looking forward to set two, but first, Fabian, conversation right this way. Hey, Fabian, thank you yes. so much for that first set of music. I, I gotta tell you, I've been partying uh, for at least the first set, and I know the second is gonna be the same. That's I, great. You know, I say a lot on these um, because it's true that perhaps my week hasn't been the greatest, and then I get to hear you play, and it made the week worth it. It makes the work worth it. So thank you to you all and to those like you around town. Thank you. Before we get into our conversation, would you take a moment to tell the audience a little bit more about yourself in your own words? Well, uh, I am from a little town called Axton, Virginia. Okay. Okay. <laughs> which is south of <laughs> south of really on the Virginia North Carolina border. Okay. And uh, I I grew up mostly there. I went to elementary, middle, high school there. And um, uh, basically, um, what happened? I think my in terms of getting involved with music um, was, was something I kind of fell into. Hmm. Um, I, I had uh, a cousin that was uh, six years older than myself who played in the church. And when I was about 12, I guess he was maybe 16 or 17, he was able to drive. So he drove around okay. to different right. churches playing and I kind of followed him. Mm -hmm. And I saw the attention that he was getting. Uh, he was kind of a charismatic kind of a guy. Uh -huh. And um, uh, and uh, what really caught my attention was he was getting a lot of attention from the girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I play the piano. <laughs> uh, right. So um, when I had the opportunity, matter of fact, um, I, I, I don't want to get this to get too long, but my mother, I, I came home from school one day and my mother said, are you interested in taking piano lessons? Uh, a guy at the church is gonna be teaching piano. Okay. And I didn't hesitate to say yes at that. So um, that was my, sort of my introduction in, into to the music. How old were you then? I was probably about 12, oh, 11 boy. or 12, yeah. Wow. So I, that's considered late, really, yeah, getting that's into, I was just thinking that to, to getting start to the music, for yeah. For piano in particular, that's a lot of dedication and the work you're going to have to put into it. You're right. Wow, and right. you stayed with it. I, I, I stuck with it. I, I stuck with it. Um, it's, it's some layers to this. When I got to college, I um, was pursuing an accounting degree, okay. which I wasn't doing very well okay. in to start. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have either. I would, I'm no going to be very transparent in, in that. <laughs> no shame in that. Um, but uh, my roommate was a music major, mm -hmm. and he noticed that, hey, hey, guy, you spending more time in the music building than you spend in your field. Mm -hmm. And he said, why, why don't you, um, you know, take, at least try the, the music, uh, what they call entrance exam. Right. And um, I said, okay, well, I don't have anything to lose. So I took, took the exam and to my surprise, I passed it. Okay. I, I had enough information and training in high school. I went to a pretty progressive high school in music and um, I got enough from that school uh, to, you know, pass the exam, and and also with my ear training, uh -huh. that was pretty up to par. So I was able to, you know, pursue a, a, a degree in music. Tell me a little bit more about this. I want to get into the the college training, but between 12 and 18, you learned enough to pass an entrance exam 
at college, I, I guess 18, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's a short amount of time. What sorts of things were you learning then? Were you learning theory? Were you learning classical music uh, and jazz? Or what, what was the training like then? Okay, on the piano side, I was taking lessons by ear at the church first, as I was saying. Then I had the opportunity to take more formal, more structured training at this music store that had uh, had a teacher, and he was teaching me more of the you know classical uh, structure right. of music. So I was getting acclimated to you know reading notes mm -hmm. on on the staff and so forth. And then uh, in high school, I was in the marching band. I was in the jazz band. Uh, I started playing trumpet about the same time I started playing piano, actually. Okay. And um, I was playing trumpet in middle school. Uh, trumpet, it, my first year in high school, then I went to baritone. Okay. Home. So with all of that put together, I think gave me the, you know, the, the knowledge and the push I needed to, to, to pass that exam. I, I, I think you're right. I, and the reason it, was, it struck me that I really want to learn, how did he get so prepared? Because I was about the same age when I started playing the piano, and I, I was playing the piano because of to impress somebody, and I didn't, I wasn't ready for no college exam <laughs> in piano by the time I got there. That's, I'm, I'm real impressed by that. Well, you know, I didn't think I was ready, to, to be honest, because I, I knew so many other people who, who actually prepared to yeah. go, uh -huh. and, and I saw the work that they were doing, and I was like, I don't feel like I'm, I'm there where they were. Well, I think you, you have a career that has proven you were more than ready. You study in college, um, and then, then you start to tour and, and meet some people. I really want to learn more about your experience as a professional musician. What sorts of things do you learn about your craft? What sorts of great people instill lessons in you? Uh, I could tell you about a few experiences. Um, one was my experience with playing for a TV show called uh, Liv In Living Color. <laughs> yeah. Was it Living Color or um, what, what's the other Cosby show? Um, uh, a Different World? Not Different World, but uh, you know what I'm talking about? I, I, I can't pull the name out of my head right now. But what we were doing was, you know, we were playing the cue music uh -huh. for for the TV show. It, it was one of Cosby's right. well, shows, yeah, one okay. of his sitcoms. And um, having done the studio musicians, w w which is pretty rigor rigorous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to really know how to to read, and yeah. you don't get a lot of chances. <laughs> no, I, you got to do one every week. You, you're right. You get, you know, maybe a couple of shots at reading the chart. When you don't get it the, sec mm -hmm. the second time, everybody's looking at you, mm -hmm. wondering why you're not, you know, getting through this. <laughs> so uh, that was a sort of an eye-opening experience. I did a, f a few of those shows and also did um, a couple of the Little Bill. I don't know if you remember that cartoon. I do. Yeah. I so do. You know, we did a couple of, of those. You know, wow. we would go to Northern Virginia, and and record. Uh, it, most of those, the musicians that we were recording with, were from New York. They would come down, and um, you know, Stu Gard, Stu Gardner, who was the the uh, Stu Gardner and Arthur Lisi, uh, uh, I think his name is were the creators of the music, the theme music, and they were responsible for doing the cue music in between scenes and stuff like that. That is, that's really incredible. I, I've never done any work like that, but it reminds me very much of putting an orchestra together. And mm -hmm. uh, they better know that line. You don't, I'm not, as a conductor or even in the uh, group with them. No, you get yeah. one or two, and if you can't play it, how'd you get this job? Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. right. They're looking at you because, you know, most of those are top-notch readers, so. 
And I am not. They have low <laughs> tolerance for incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> Those serious folks, serious musicians are what they call them. That's, that's fine. Right. There is nothing wrong with that's that. That's right. It teaches us how to catch up with them, too. Exactly. Tell exactly. me something about these guys from Save with You Tonight. Um, yes. Speaking of top-notch musicians, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, these guys, I've traveled with uh, these guys, especially Carl Lester. We've, we've been traveling together probably since the, the 90s. We've actually been together. Uh, we went to the same school, Virginia Union University. Okay. We've, we've been in countless bands together. Uh, we've, we've toured all around the world together. Um, the, the band itself was a band that toured and did the Sister Act, um, the Sister Act show. Mm -hmm. And we, we did about maybe 20, 30 cities in, wow. in Austria. Wow. Uh, this was around 2016. Um, and uh, yeah, these, those guys are, are fantastic. Just to tell you, give you a little bit more insight, um, Alvin Spratley, mm -hmm. who's, he, he plays bass, drums, play, plays little keys. Mm -hmm. uh, he also plays with this guy. His name is Daniel Witherspoon. Okay. And they are now preparing to do a 50 city tour where they are uh, the promotional band for Nord that oh. that does the, you know, that makes the uh, keyboard instruments. Yeah. yeah, so they'll, he's part of the band backing these artists up. They go into all 50 cities. Wow. And, um, you know, they'll be, you know, backing these uh, these great artists of, uh, no, uh, you know, for, for Nord. You know, there are so many opportunities for musicians that we don't learn about in school, that nobody tells you about before or even after school. All you hear is you're never going to work. But nobody tells us about things like that. I didn't know that was a thing people did. Yes. That's correct. Now. Yeah, I mean, I, I just really found out about that. I, I had some sense that there were some kind of promotional things well, that I go mean, on, but... As I'm saying that, of course I knew that that's what they were doing, but I never considered. I never considered what I'm doing right now as an option for somebody like me. Right. You know, the education that we get from talking to folks like you is invaluable. <laughs> is what I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful to that. You know, a couple right. of weeks ago we had Saxmo on, and he said in that interview, um, there's something like he doesn't like when people talk about Richmond folk as local musicians, but people from New York are just musicians. Um, I think that the talent here is is second to none. I think the education that folks are getting here in Richmond, I did not study here, but the education here from the educators I meet seems excellent. It seems top notch. It seems superb. And listening to them speak, I know it is. I want to know from you what your experience as a student in this community and then as a, as a performing artist, as a professional, as someone that folks like me look up to, what has that experience been like for you? Here? Well, look. Now that you, you, you mentioned James, uh, who's a good friend of mine as well, and he, I want to back backpedal just a little yeah, bit off please. of what you said. Um, you were talking about Virginia musicians, some of, some of the finest musicians in the really. world. Uh, Carter Buford, who is the drummer, is the drummer for the Dave Matthews Band, mm -hmm. you know, used to live right here in Richmond. Mm -hmm. He's from Charlottesville, but uh, he actually used to play in a band called Friends, who I was a part of. Come on, with Rudy Faulkner? Yes. What? Yes. All of us were in the band. Well, Rudy hadn't come along yet. Okay. It was myself, Carl Lester, and, and Carter first. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Then it, it just morphed into different uh, members after that. But yeah. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Rudy. <laughs> right, right. You still have my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rudy's my boy, man. He's, yeah. 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 But Carter Buford, um, let's see, who else? Steve Wilson. Okay. Steve Wilson, who did a lot of work with Chick Corea. Mm -hmm. um, 
let's see who else. Uh, James Genus, okay. who who plays with everybody. Herbie Hancock. Uh, he was one of the band members for uh, SNL. Mm, mm. <laughs> um, Nate Smith, who was also a drummer of the group called Friends, which is most of us that, that you saw up here yeah. today. Um, he's he's made a name for himself. Uh, he's played with different different people. And he's you, you know he's a big one of the top drummers out there now, oh, and it's, it's countless. Uh, uh, Clarence Penn. Um, wow. It's wow. And, and these and these people are in the national eye. These are not just what we consider local. These these guys are really doing it on a high level. I many uh, many of you all many of us here are. I mean, it's yes. something about you know they, they joke about something in the water and the Pharrell and, and people make their jokes, but it's something more than just the water we're drinking here <laughs> right. in Virginia that's given us something to do. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, we're hearing some originals tonight. We're yes. hearing. Um, uh, of, of Carl's originals himself. But what can you tell me about some projects you're working on with him? I do know a bird sang into my ear about a recording that's getting ready to drop. Yes, yes. Number one, Carl, of course, he's about to release a single mm -hmm. that's coming out called LC Groove. Which means it's basically Lance and Carl. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask, okay, what's that mean? <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to be released. This will actually be his first project, solo project that he's released. Okay. Um, yeah, I released my project back in 2018. Carl and I both are, we've been more collab collaborative type uh, musicians. Right and hadn't really stepped out out front. We were more comfortable, you know, sort of in the in the shadows. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, helping other people. <laughs> but uh that's that's all good. So he's coming out with, with his single uh very soon. Um he's also working with a young group called Infusion. Okay. And I'm we're in the studio you know, I'm mixing uh, their project for them, mi mixing and mastering it. And um, they, they, of course, finished all the recording. And uh, hopefully, they are looking at releasing their project sometime late this month or early next month. Okay. And, um, you know, we, we got those those two projects that are on the table coming up. Well, what about your own project? Well, uh, well let's, let's talk about this. Okay. Um, February 2nd, there was a project that was released. It was a, a more of a collaborative project with, with different artists. And here it goes. The, the name of it is Blue Jazz. Okay. And um, Blue jazz. Uh, basically, who's on it, uh, I don't know if you've heard, some of these guys are on Sirius Radio. Uh, Elon Trotman, okay. sax player. Uh, David Dyson, who used to be the bass player for Pieces of a Dream. Okay. Right. And you may have heard of Bobby Lyles. Uh, yeah. Bobby Lyles, uh, you, you, you will hear him at least a few times a day <laughs> on, Sirius, on Sirius Watercolors. And, but this project was released February 2nd, and uh, I'm on it. Okay, all right. I, I'm uh, the first cut on it. Uh, it's called Be Thankful, which is a, a cut uh, that it's a uh, cover of Curtis Mayfield tune called uh, Diamond in the Back. Okay. All yeah, right. so, uh, so this is what's happening right now. Where can we find that? You can go on Facebook and put in Double O Entertainment. Double O Entertainment, okay. And that uh, that website or that Facebook, um, the guy the guy's name is Orlando Mullins. Okay. Um, I couldn't get that out, but um, if you go to that site, Double O Entertainment, it will you you'll see 
probably the advertisement and promos of this. Okay. And it, it will tell you exactly where to go to, to find it. I think it's on Spotify and iTunes. It's probably on most of the major uh, internet outlets, store outlets. So, um, so Blue Jazz the name of the project. Facebook, Double O Entertainment to d- find it. Exactly. Gotcha. And Blue is spelled B-L-U. Okay, no E at the end. No E at B-L-U. the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fan, wonderful project. Fantastic music on it. I'm going to be looking at it. I really enjoy getting to hear about new or underheard of projects on this. It makes me feel like yes. I'm a, a real journalist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know what? I, um, I think I got caught up asking you about education a little longer than I wanted, and I've run out of time to keep learning about your career. I want to know more about how you, well, I mean, I can ask you whenever I want, but I want folks at home to know <laughs> more about all the great stuff you've done that just means that there's an episode number two coming up with your name on it at some point in the future. Absolutely. Before we, um, before I head out of here and give you the stage back for some more music, what last piece of information have I not gotten out of of you tonight that you really want to give? Wow. I think I've hit you with a lot lot of of stuff. Uh, I can't think of anything uh, impactful uh, else to say, but I definitely appreciate you having me on today. Yes, sir. And uh, it's it's been wonderful. The Jazz Society is just like being home, really. I've I've known BJ and a lot of the Jazz Society members for for years since I come to Richmond. So, no, um, it's it's a, it's a family. There's warmth at yes. home at the Jazz Society. I met them years ago at Milestones. Yes. Uh, in Midlothian, no longer there. And I'll never forget that night. It's, it's like they'd known me for years, even though they hadn't. So thank you, BJ and Robert, for your warmth. Yes. Uh, that's all I've got for you. Uh, all right. We've got some more music. Yes, we do. I'm looking forward to it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hello again. We are back for our second set. And before we start our second set, I'd like to introduce you to the guys that you're listening to. All of these are my brothers up here um let me start with with uh phil foster jr on drums i think i heard the applause (laughs) um oh let let me just state this too um this entire band was the touring band for sister act uh, we did a tour back in 2016, I believe. And uh, that was like maybe, what, about the third installment, fourth installment of Sister Act uh, tour that we did in Europe. And uh, Phil was on that on the last tour with us, and he, and he showed up. <laughs> He's a great drummer. And uh, we're going to move on to my brother in the back who's on guitar tonight. Usually he's on bass, that kind of threw me earlier. But he's playing guitar. Uh, His name is Carl Lester Blackwell. (laughs) Carl Blackwell Lester Ill. All right, I know I'm gonna mess up some names tonight, I don't care. Anyway, we have Alvin Spratley on bass. We need to put a mic like right in the middle so you can hear the like the inside stuff that happens in the band. That's more interesting than what you see live. <laughs> and y'all, you're listening to myself, Fabian Lance, um, and uh, we, we're here going to finish out the night with a few few other more songs. Um, we're going to do another song by Herbie Hancock called Palm Grease. Bow, 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 bow,
That was Palm Grease, y'all. We're going to do another song. This is an uh, original song <clears throat> written by a good friend here. El the title of the song is called L.C. Groove, written by Carl Lester Ill. And as a matter of fact, as I talked about in the interview, um, he's going to be releasing this single very soon. A date hasn't been set yet, am I correct? Date hasn't been set yet, but it's going to be soon that the single is finished and it's we're just working out some logistics and getting it released. So again, the title of this song is called LC Groove.
LC Groove. He can write a little bit, can he? <laughs> Sound pretty good. I, I, I almost felt that one. Almost. <laughs> We're going to do our last song. As a matter of fact, Carl also arranged this last tune. It's called People Make the World Go Round, which was made popular by the stylistics. I don't know who exactly wrote it. I should have just researched why I came to the show. Clyde but Otis is one of them. Clyde Otis? Yeah. Okay, from okay. Virginia, Virginia Cliff, New Jersey. Oh, well, see, <laughs> yeah, from your hometown. Yeah, so, so, but anyway, yeah, the uh, people make the world go around. Uh, probably heard the stylistics do it more so than anybody. Um, here we go.
does the world go round and round and round? <laughs> I think it's spinning just fine tonight. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever danced that much backstage before. <laughs> Normally I'm out there so y'all can see me, but you have me. Anyway, back to y'all <laughs> at home. Baby. Gentlemen, for the arrangements, sir. Thank you. Thank you. B.J. Brown, Richmond Jazz Society. Can't go a night without thanking you. Dominion Energy. Thank you for, for making this possible for us. Remember Tommy Productions to you. Thank you for capturing this for us. Can't forget Chris in the booth up there. To you at home. Thank you for loving with us. Thank you for listening to us. And thank you for learning from us. In Richmond, Virginia, at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts from the Leslie Cheek Theater stage, this has been our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. I have always been Robert Fennard. Good night. <laughs>